So the storm has intensified. At 2 a.m. was a hurricane hundred pound winds up to 130 miles and a hurricane force wind gust band there. That's the uh, 50 to 70 mile an hour winds with gusts to 90. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see some gusts in some of the heavier squalls above 100 miles an hour. Get to your hunker down place, your internal shelter right now for those of you. Sixth Avenue, once again in the city of Hialeah, try to avoid the unnecessary generation of wastewater and be cognizant that some may experience sewer backups until the repairs are completed. No time frame on when those repairs are going to happen. And not far from there is the city of Coral Gables. They are making sure you know about their emergency. All right, guys. Hurricane Edema is just about over us and gone. We are getting the tail end of it. And uh, we got the word that we are to head in to relieve the Bravo shift, which has 
overnight become the alpha shift. So now we're going in around 8 p.m. It's now 7.30, but I decided I'm gonna leave early because uh, it's still a little bit light outside and there's a lot of down power lines. So at night, I'm not gonna be able to see those power lines because all the street lights are out. So I'm gonna leave now so I can see to make sure I don't hit any of these power lines. Take a look how low that, that power line is. We're gonna head out now to relieve the uh, overnight shift. They were there, they were out the storm there. They're gonna be anxious to go home, check on their families, check on their house to make sure everything's all right. So after a hurricane is when the most casualties happen because everyone's out and about looking. There's down power lines, there's puddles. Um, people try to remove debris. And that's why we urge people to stay indoors until it's all safe and clear. Out here on the road, pretty much, uh, officers from departments headed in. So not too much going on. Uh, I heard Brickle is underwater about uh, four feet, five feet of water in Brickell, the downtown area. And also, we have a member, uh, earlier vlog I showed you how many cranes were around the area because all the construction, I actually heard two of those cranes went down. So we'll, we'll go check that out later, uh, see if we can swing by those cranes. But our, at our police station, we have uh, generators for situations like this. So if something happens, and the rest of the city loses power, we still have power in order to keep our operations going. We cannot uh, stop operations at any point. That is what we're here for, emergency services, and this is a state of emergency, so. So you got the, uh, the midnight shift showing up. These are guys that stayed home and were able to go home and ride out the storm at the house, and now they're showing up to relieve the other officers. Uh, shift has ended for them and now it's our turn to come in and take over the uh, the midnight shift We're gonna go up, have our uh, unit meeting. Major. Good. And we're back. And we're back. Action. Midnight shift. Ready to go. You guys, behind the scenes, we have. Uh, our logistics with food and water and we have our recruits here from the academy they're helping out and i gotta get to these guys how long have you been here before since 0600 sir 0600 since friday. today since friday sir since friday so yeah. since yesterday 6 a.m in the morning they were here they took some rest and they're back at it these guys are getting meals ready for the officers out on the street you guys are working hard to keep everybody fed so they can be productive out there on the street. But these guys right here, hats off to them. They've been working really hard. All right guys, the storm has passed. Uh, we just got our orders. Right now, we're still pumping out information to the public as far as social media. Our officers are out there. We have double the amount of officers out there. They're patrolling the streets. And now the dangers of the storm uh, itself are gone, but the debris and the aftermath is uh, still out there as well as looters. Miami police say the culprits were caught as Irma was punishing Miami on Sunday.
six people were arrested from three incidents in Midtown, including places like the Foot Locker store. City Commissioner Francis Suarez was given this video. I think it's despicable that um, anyone would try to take advantage of the fact that um, you know we're in a vulnerable state. Police say the criminals smashed windows to break into the stores. Miami police displayed photos of the items stolen from them, items that were recovered. I also want to thank the public. Without these tips, we would not have been able to arrest these individuals. We have to be extra careful. Um, it's really dark outside. There's no electricity. And we're dealing with uh, a lot of businesses that are abandoned. And you have, unfortunately, you have people taking advantage of that and breaking into businesses. Um, we already had some arrests earlier in the day. We had some people trying to break into some foot lockers, targets, uh, family dollars, supermarkets. So uh, we have those offenders in custody. We sent out a strong message saying to stay indoors or else there will be consequences if you're found looting. Um, it's a serious felony here to loot after a natural disaster such as a hurricane. So we're taking it very seriously. Our guys are out there. Uh, they're working hard to keep the community safe and uh, to keep residents and businesses uh, safe as well. So we're gonna head out now to the street. Again, today I have Officer Sedano with me and uh, we're gonna go now and just patrol the streets a little bit. So uh, you're gonna have to bear with me on the transitions from place to place. I'm doing a lot. I'm uh, managing all the social media, trying to get information out as well as trying to handle the vlog. So um, I got Officer Sedano, she's about to get in the car and we're gonna go out there now to uh, check up on everything and make sure everything's going all right and report out to our residents and let them know what's going on. Well guys, you see now where the hurricane is. It's past us and it's up in Central Florida, Jacksonville, Tampa, uh, Naples, West and uh, Central Florida. Um, basically here we're just dealing with the aftermath, the uh, downed trees, wires and whatnot and this is what we have so far. Earlier when the hurricane was coming through, this whole area was underwater. It was about four feet of water. As you see now, the water has gone down. We just came by to check it out, to see in fact if uh, it was still underwater. My lens is fogging up. To see in fact if it, if it was still underwater. So looking good. Uh, there is still some flooding down the street a little bit. I'll show you that. But earlier, the water was about up to here, up to the stairs. We've been getting a lot of questions um, online about the Brickle area and how it was. So we decided to come out here. We tweeted out a little video uh, just to keep residents informed. Uh, we want to keep them informed what's going on around the city and try to prevent them. You know, when you're inside all day, you build up the anxiety. And you want to come out and look around and it's not safe. So we're trying to prevent that. So we just show them, hey guys, look, everything's all right. We drove up and down Brickle, did a quick time lapse, posted that on Twitter, and now they got the feel. Okay, it's not too bad. I don't have to go out and check it out. Officer Sedano's here with me. She's getting vested up. Mainly a lot of the calls tonight are, yeah. are looters. We've been getting a lot of break-ins. A lot of the calls tonight. We've been getting a lot of break-ins. Uh, we're, we're hearing the radio, we're monitoring the radio, making listening uh, we're gonna go by do a little patrol tonight as we hit those uh, areas of concern but uh, like I said tonight vesting up she's got her vest right over here it's extra dangerous it's very dark uh, we're lit up as you see the the SUVs lit up so people know we're coming and they could be hiding anywhere so So they, uh, they broke the door here at the CVS earlier and the uh, looter's been going in there 
helping themselves. So the, the bay's the bay's right over there, and this was all flooded, and that's why you see uh, a boat up here on the road. That's a that's a sign that should be in the water. And the water is over here. Bayside Mall is self-explanatory. It's by the bay, so water uh, levels rise, floods right in the bayside. That's pretty high right there. Yeah. Guys, executive assistant Bernat, you seen him on uh, the last hurricane vlog? He's out here, uh, he was helping the homeless last hurricane vlog. What happened this hurricane? A lot of help? Yeah, we helped a lot of people here. Now we're out here now post hurricane to make sure there's no individuals out here that need any medical assistance. All right, it, you have any numbers on how, much, how many you put to a shelter? All together, we put about 230, 240 individuals in the shelter in the past two days. Outstanding, sir. Doing a phenomenal job. I appreciate you stay safe. We're gonna head north. Have a good night. All right. So guys, this is like, uh, this is where Ultra takes place. Like I said, you see the, the Ultra vlogs. So you guys get a feel, understanding kind of where the location is. Luckily it's trees, you know, clean it up. Still got most uh, standing and it just branches that fell off. It's a mess, but it can be cleaned up. I want to say given the, the, the magnitude of this hurricane, how big it was, how strong it was, um, and the damage we saw on the like the different islands in the Caribbean that it yeah, hit. I, I don't we, think we, we got we got pretty lucky. Pretty lucky. Um, power outage, debris like you see around um, power lines, and but pretty lucky. Not not too much rain. Most of the flooding was due to uh, the ocean waters rising. See when you get when you get a lot of rain, this is what you get. So luckily it wasn't too too much rain uh, when the rain seeps into the roots it starts making it soft and then the, the wind blows it, it, it come out. yeah and then it's easier for it to come out so thankfully it was rain wasn't too much rain but uh, we're gonna continue moving on and assessing what's going on I heard there's a crane a little bit north of us that we'll that went there. down we have over 20 cranes here in the downtown Brickell area. There's a lot of uh, construction, new development coming on. Having a hurricane come through when you're trying to build skyscrapers that are way up in the air can uh, be a dangerous combination. So you can't really see too much up there. We got our light trying to spot it up. But there's a there's a crane. There's two cranes up there. We're right now in, in the Winwood area off of Biscayne Boulevard in like 30th. The, one of the crane arms up there broke and came down. Luckily there was no reported injuries. But uh yeah, it's, I mean you can't really see it, it's so dark. Yo!
Live guys, uh, we got a we're at a possible looter stash house here in Little Haiti, just off of Northeast Miami Court and 47th Street. We're gonna go down and talk to um, hello everyone. One of the supervisors on the scene. We're actually gonna talk to one of the supervisors on the scene, like Nick says, reference this possible looter stash house where we've uh, discovered that they have uh, items stored here of um, uh, sneakers, cell phones, uh, clothes, and many more items. So um, it's Miami uh, Court and Northeast First on 47th Street. Again, a possible looter stash house where they taken items from different stores and uh, brought it here. So we're walking towards the house and we're going to speak to some of the officers here and the sergeant. Sarge. Hey, sir. Sarge, how are you? Good, yourself, how are you doing? Good, 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 thank you. So we got the call and we're here trying to find out what happened. We heard that this is a possible uh, looter's stash house where you found some items. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened and how you guys were able to come here? So someone who called in who gave us a tip anonymously that there were several vehicles and individuals here unloading possible stolen items from Foot Locker and from other stores. Upon arrival, we made contact with the subjects who were outside the location, who couldn't provide any information in reference to them legally being here. So upon making contact with the owner, the owner authorized us to go inside, and that we did. And when, upon going inside, we found all the items that were stolen from several stores. Can you, can you uh, more or less, how many items? Uh, we would roughly say in between clothes and shoes and cell phones, roughly about 100 items. About 100 items. And about how many people did you find here when you arrived? Uh, six individuals. Now, how many have you arrested? All six. All six. Um, also, uh, there's an investigation obviously going on here. And what will happen after you guys uh, conduct your investigation here? Okay, after we conduct our investigation, those individuals will be arrested and transported to the Dade County Jail. Okay, uh, and Sarge, there's been some videos going around. Uh, about different looters hitting different areas in Miami and and these are confirmed that these are some of the looters that were on in Foot Locker so and far based upon the video that we did see on social media that was trending we so just I think we lost connection on that so you're confirming yes like yes, according videos, to the video yes. guys, uh, and we're gonna end the live broadcast thanks again Sarge Thank appreciate it so again, uh, we've got a looter stash house here. Different areas in the in the city of Miami that were hit. We caught them. Everybody, Hold on one is, time. Go ahead, go ahead, Commander. Hello, everybody. This is Commander Goss from Little Haiti Net. I just want you all to know that the curfew violation will be enforced. We will not allow our citizens to be victimized further. This is a difficult time for many of us, and what we'd like to see is the community come together rather than be divisive. We will be out there relentlessly, and looters will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Thank you. All right, guys, update. I'm here with the assistant fire chief. Want to introduce yourself? Yes, how are you doing? Chief Adrian Placencio, assistant fire chief and also fire marshal at City of Miami. We were asked to go assist um, and grab some aerial footage with the Mavic over uh, down in around the Biscayne Boulevard in like 30th Street there's a down crane you guys probably heard about it if you were monitoring social media during the hurricane 
Uh, right now, we're gonna go grab that footage, and after the footage, uh, I'll let the chief talk about what's gonna happen in regards to their plan of action. Well, having that drone up there is a great opportunity to better assess the hazards and the exposure surrounding the building. Um, as you know, a, a down crane is, has a lot of weights, counterweights that have fallen and it could be a significant hazard. So we just want a, a better opportunity to assess that, those hazards accordingly and better formulate a plan and we're sure we're doing the best we can to make sure everyone's safe. All right, outstanding. So let's go ahead over there now. So we're arrival at the crane site. Ugh. Building's uh, 30 plus stories high. Once we get the, uh, the damage report up there, what's the next step? Well, I think the next step right now is um, the construction company is gonna acquire a larger crane and begin starting to see how, or assess, how they can take that crane down safely. Okay. And that's what should be happening next. And that could take a little bit of time. Could take two weeks possibly. All right. So let's go up there and uh, see what we so we'll see what it looks like. Sounds good. All right. Okay, we got our footage, good to go. Now, Chief, take it away, what do we do from now? Well, first I wanna thank you for this opportunity, um, letting us come with you and take that drone up there to truly assess um, how that uh, crane is being held up there on that building or that part of it and assess the hazards below and throughout the structure. Um, so thank you for that. Hey, you're welcome. It's a great experience. So what we see there is, yeah, the crane is being held up right now. Um, what's next is obviously you need to mitigate that hazard. So the contractor, the construction company, will need to take down the crane at some point and um, they anticipate taking the parts of the crane that are hanging on the structure. Their goal is this afternoon, late afternoon. Whether or not that happens is yet to see. So right now, you know, we ask that obviously people don't go around that area. I mean, it's still a hazard until it's taken down. Um, we've taken steps in notifying occupants. Um, the street there around it is barricaded and we work to evacuate occupants of the building directly across from it. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it to make you think things are moving smoothly. The construction company will be doing their diligence and doing their best to try to take down that crane as safely as possible to mitigate that hazard. All right, and then uh, are they going to use the other crane to pull off the piece, or we do not know about that yet? We don't know about that yet. I mean, that would be a great um, that would be a great thing to do if that other crane is functional. The crane's already up there, so that would be ideal to be able to use that crane to take that down. But again, that's up to the construction company. All right, Chief, appreciate it. No, thank you very much. All right, let's go run that footage back. Right, guys it's the end of the hurricane to end the alpha bravo and i want to give a quick shout out to the entire police academy that's here they've been here throughout the whole hurricane working hard in the logistics area quick shout out to these guys so let's find out who's here from the academy who's here PSA. who else one, two, and the most senior class here one, two, three. One, three, one, five. oh big shout out to you 
guys. Thanks so much. So you guys want to sign off? Yes, yes sir! I assume you know how to do that. Yes, sir! All right, so don't forget to... Like, share, subscribe! And we'll see you next vlog. We're out. <laughs>